Not me wearing a literal child's cape with a true vintage 1920s wedding dress. That'd be, that'd be wild. Who would do that? Hi friends and happy Capesmas! I'm so excited to be sharing this pattern with y'all. This is my favorite out of the Capesmas patterns, I've got to say. It is the Dino Gore Tutorial. If you like pretty terrible dinosaur drawings or you grew up wanting someone to take your hand and bring you along to Dragon Land, then this might just be your favorite cape too. This cape has multiple views, including open chest and a full volume cape. It has multiple lengths. This one right here is the child size or cape let length. And there's also a full size, which would be floor length on most children and is um, booty length on most adults. This pattern is currently free on my Kofi and will stay free for literally all time. However, donations are always appreciated and help me keep the lights on. This video tutorial is broken into little tiny chunks so that for each section of the making process, there's a section that will hold your hand and walk you through how to do it. While I didn't do a written printable of instructions for this video, the transcript for this video will be available in text format and I did do a little checklist thingy for you. But that's enough for me. Let's jump in! While cutting out your pieces, make sure that you read the instructions on each pattern piece. Where it says cut to, make sure that you are cutting to, and if you're instructed to cut on a fold, make sure that you're cutting on a fold. Here I have the pattern pieces laid out in what seemed to be the most conservative way to make sure that I was getting the most out of my fabric. As you can see here, I've got the little eggy piece lined up on the fold there in the corner, and I have my two Dino Gore panels being cut out as well. I'm also cutting out two of my Dino Gore hood, and over here I have this straight edge where I'm going to be cutting out six of my little Dino Gores themselves. I know this angle is a little funky looking, but I swear these are being cut straight on the grain. As you can see here, because of the angles, you can cut out a whole line of these and just kind of flip it over just like this. There's a couple of pattern hacks that you can do as well. For example, if you don't want to deal with the little stegosaurus spines, you can fold those in and not cut them out. This will give you a very plain cape and it won't have a ton of volume, but it'll still be a lot of fun, especially for kiddos to play with. The hood also has an option where you can cut off the stegosaurus spines, unfortunately they don't just fold in, and cut out a normal or spineless hood. And speaking of making this pattern for kiddos, if you would like to make this pattern for a very small child, you can fold it right in between two of the stegosaurus spines and cut it out for a much shorter child. Just make sure that you're also adding a little bit of seam allowance. If you do cut the Dino Gore cape out shorter, you're going to need to draft some quick gores. I'm only doing two, and I am drafting them from some scrap fabric that was not going to get used through this process. As you can see here, I'm just simply cutting a triangle. It doesn't really matter how long they are, just so long as they're not longer than the cape itself. As you cut out your pattern, make sure that you are also marking all of the lines that you are supposed to, such as the gore insertion lines and the dart line. I like to do this with a friction pen because the heat can make it uh, disappear and that's really convenient for me, but any marking method that you prefer will be fine. You also may want to trim one of the seam lines on one of your eggy pattern examples. To start with, if you have any gores that are double gores, especially in your front, you're going to want to sew your gores together first before inserting them into your cape. You do this by sewing a straight stitch 5 eighths of an inch away from your raw edge, just like you would any other seam. And then you're going to take it over and press it well. You want to make sure that your corner is nice and flat before continuing. Line your gore up face down along one of the insertion slits. Make sure that the corner sticks up just a little bit past the edge. This will allow your actual seam lines to meet in a corner instead of running over each other. Also, it'll make for a stronger gore. I'd recommend starting your seam at the tip of the gore, backstitch into it, and then continue forward. I use a slighter seam allowance than I do on the rest of the gore at the very, very tip. 
I then let my seam slowly become a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance as it goes down. Some people prefer to hand sew their gores in, and if you would like to do so, I will link a tutorial for that in the description box below. So, once your first seam of your gore is inserted, you're going to go ahead and iron it as well as you can before continuing. To sew the second seam, you're just going to lay your fabric on the gore as flat as you can get it. You don't want to have the fabric tugging or pulling or wrinkled in the seam, so go ahead and really smooth that out, possibly steam it with your iron, and then pin it in place. You can see just how flat and clean all my seam lines are. To start off the stitch, you're going to do it just as you did before, back stitching into the start line of your seam. You don't want to cross over the stitch line from the previous seam too much because then you'll get an awkward little tangled section, but you do want them to just barely kiss each other. When you take your gore straight off the machine, it's going to look a little bit wrinkled and awkward. What you're going to want to do is iron it very, very well. I would recommend using a lot of steam to kind of shape the fabric into a nice flat line. And be sure to iron from both sides, starting with the inside and moving on to the outside. I like to dampen the outside edge of my gore and then press it really well. This works phenomenally on wool to give you a nice solid piece of fabric. I'm using a cotton flannel that has a little bit less stretch though. And once it's ironed in place, your gores are done! For added volume and coziness, you may want to add the optional front panel. The front panel is cut out of the same fabric as the rest of your cape, and you will want two of them, one for each side in the front. Simply lay it face down on your cape and pin that seam together. The angled side should be facing outwards. Sew this down with a 5 8 of an inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. And of course remember to iron it. If you are going to add in the front panel, I would strongly recommend gathering your cape, or at the very least gathering it in the front, to accommodate the added length of the panel. Before sewing your hood, you're going to want to sew down your darts first. Go ahead and fold down the center of the dart and make sure that the lines are lined up exactly. Then you're going to stitch straight down. It helps if you uh, mark your lines on the inside of the fabric so that you can just follow it as you're sewing. Be sure to trim that dart before continuing on and lay your hood faces together before sewing around the perimeter. There's a lot of corners and curves, make sure that you are following those. It helps if you put your needle in the down position and lift your foot so that you can get a nice 90 degree corner. And other than that, this is just a straight stitch with a 5 8 seam allowance. Once you've sewn your hood, go ahead and clip your corners and stroke the insides and make sure to iron it really nice. And once you've got that done, go ahead and take a Frixon pen or whatever marking method you prefer and mark the curve of the hood and the very edges here. That's where you're going to do some top stitching to keep your stegosaurus spines from just being big open pockets. However, you can leave those open if you wish. The top stitching merely adds a little bit of stability and helps them to stick upright. You can bone them as well, but I didn't quite go that far. Next, you're going to sew the stegosaurus spines on the back of your cape. It's very similar to doing it on the hood where you have to follow the curves and the corners. Make sure that at the bottom of the spines, you leave an inch here that you can fold up for the hem. Then be sure to clip your curves and clip the bulk out of your corners. This will help you get nice sharp edges and a beautiful curve. Press this well before top stitching. If you wish, you can do one solid line down the spine of your stegosaurus spines and then zigzag back up, but I chose to do each individual triangle inside of the spines. Both ways will yield relatively the same results. After you've done the top stitching and before you attach the hood, be sure to do your shoulder darts. For shoulder darts that fit you perfectly, be sure to check out my fitting a cape tutorial. And also, don't forget to pink those seam allowances. You don't want extra bulk in your shoulders.
To pin your hood to your cape, I find it's easiest to lie the hood face up and then pin my cape down onto the hood. And whether I've gathered the hood to the cape or the cape to the hood, I like to sew my garment with the gathers facing upwards. This seam is sewed with a simple straight stitch and a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And whatever you do, don't forget to backstitch! Prep your pockets by sewing them together right sides in with a straight edge and a 5 eighths seam allowance. Then go ahead and trim the curves so that they'll turn inside out properly. By the end of it, you should have two pockets made from four pieces. Top stitch along the top edge of your pocket before pinning it down. The top two inches of the pocket should be free to flap around. You're going to want a really strong top stitching stitch to hold this pocket down so the little hands don't accidentally rip it off. I recommend doing one pass in line with where you did the top stitching, and then when you get to the top arc of your pocket, go ahead and stitch to the very edge and do a second arc. Not only will this look neat, but it'll be a really strong attachment. To start the hem for the bulk of your cape, fold under the fabric by 1 8 of an inch and press it down. I recommend doing this in stages, so press all the way around before continuing and folding your fabric under by a half of an inch. You're going to press this as well and pin it just a bit and take this over to your machine. From the right side of your fabric, go ahead and sew this down. Feel free to follow the guide mark on your machine for half an inch and make sure that your needle is catching the back end of the hem fabric with every stitch. Better slow than sorry. Now the bottom edge of your cape is going to be a little bit more difficult to hem. I would actually recommend ironing this all in one go. This is because the folded section of your hem fabric is going to need to be eased into place with steam from your iron to make it lay flat. And that's easier to do in one go than in two strips. But once you have all of your hem fabric finagled and laid flat, you can go ahead and put it through your machine. This is very similar to the way you did the rest of the hem for the cape. Albeit a bit wider, as this hem is one inch wide as opposed to being half an inch wide. But I still recommend going slowly and carefully. And when you come to the Stegosaurus Stale, go ahead and backstitch before lifting your needle and starting another backstitch on the other side of your Stegosaurus tail. To make your tie straps, the first thing you're going to do is fold down the edges and press them in. All of the raw edges should be facing inwards before you fold it in half. This will encapsulate all of them perfectly. Take this over to your sewing machine and with a straight stitch, go ahead and stitch along the edges of your tie front. You'll likely want to go along the folded edge as well so that it matches. Now you're going to sew your ties down to your cape. I like to sew them along the seam where your hood meets your body. If you're going to be understitching the seam allowance, it's a really good idea to hide the ends of your tie front under the understitching, or alternatively, you can do some hand stitching to whip them down, and this looks very aesthetic and historical, or you can always just do some nice easy top stitching with your machine whatever floats your boat. Before getting into the final reveal, I did want to show you the volume comparison. Here is the Dino Gore with only one gore in the front pattern. Here is the Gnome Cape with two gores inserted in the front of the pattern. As you can see, it's got a little bit more volume than the Dino Gore. And here is the Gnome Cape, which has the same base as the Dino Gore with two gores and a front panel. And as you can see, it has luxurious amounts of volume. But anyways, on to the final reveal. I am so happy with how these capes turned out. At the very least, I am really happy thinking about all my nieces and nephews running around and having a blast in them. I also really like the outfit I put together with this cape. I think it's kind of like Monster High, but if they had a dinosaur edition, I like it. 
Something about the purple capelet just gives me like fairy in the forest vibes, so I paired it with this gray dress just to get some nice shots. I definitely think that dino bounding could be a thing in the future. Honestly, who doesn't love dinosaurs? Aside from Kent Hovind, but he doesn't count. Now, you should have all of the information that you need to turn yourself into King of the Tyrant Lizards. If you would like to know how I did the fancy lace trim on this cape, then you'll want to check out the embellishments video, which will be coming out relatively soon. And if you like this video, as always, be sure to give it a like so that more awesome people like you can see it. Thank you for watching all the way to the end of this video. That actually helps out a lot more than you might know. And if you want to see more from me, go ahead and subscribe. I'd love to hear more from you too. And if you want to super support me, I do have a Kofi, but you already know that because that's where you went to download this pattern, silly goose. I'll see y'all later. Bye, friends! <laughs> oh, good of a girl. You're just too good, huh? Oh, there we go. Come on, come on. Good girl. Good girl. Ah. This is my baby. She sits at my feet while I record. <laughs> Isn't that right? Isn't that right, baby? You just sit there like a good little girl. <laughs>